Yeah. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of uh, June 1st, 2017. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight, and I will be presiding tonight. Um, and as is our custom, before we convene, we uh, have a public comment section where the public is allowed to, is invited to come and speak on any topic of their choosing, as long as they um, abide by the rules of, of the chambers. And those rules are, uh, please keep your comments under three minutes. You'll see a counter up here above me and for all the Trump things. What's that? Okay, so the, and uh, uh, when you step up, please state your name and address for the public record. Uh, as I said, you can speak on any topic, on anything. We ask that one, that you respect the decorum of the chambers and refrain from cussing, and also that you um, please do not defame other people. As I, I, I will point out, all of us up here, you can defame us till till late in the morning if you want, but it's because uh, we're elected officials and thereby we're not protected by those things. But if your neighbor annoys the bejesus out of you, you can say that, but don't mention your neighbor's name by way of example. So. Um, and also understanding that the council, because this is your time to talk, the council will not respond. We will listen to you as, is, as, as we should, but this is your time to speak. As you, if you want to stick around after public comment, you'll see we'll do a whole lot of talking. We just want to save our for that. So, um, so if you ask any questions, they'll have to stand as rhetorical questions because we're not able to respond to you. All that said, Let's get started. We have Ed Olmsted, please. Uh, my name's Ed Olmsted. I'm at 43 Stilson Avenue in Florence. And I've come by tonight to thank the City Council for unanimously supporting the Blue Community's resolution on its first reading. I also want to thank Northampton High School Environmental Club for joining in recommending this resolution to the City Council. The resolution, this resolution supports the stewardship of water as a natural resource, denotes water and sanitation services as fundamental human rights, commits the city to avoiding single-use water bottles where feasible, and supports the installation of water bottle filling stations. These are not earth-shattering commitments, but they are significant lo local actions. I want to speak particularly to the democratic process and effort to increase involvement of all citizens in this understand, under, undertaking. Bill Diamond brought the idea of Northampton becoming the first blue community in the United States to the Climate Action Group at our church a few months ago. He heard about this in Canada and decided to get the relevant information. He joined with others. And this simple genesis was the, this was the simple genesis of the effort that has led to this resolution. I believe this is a positive example of the value of our democracy. The fact that the City Council unanimously supports this resolution sends a message of support for democracy. It says that reasonable initiatives brought forward by citizens have a chance at acceptance and enactment. I believe that the commitment to undertake a public awareness campaign is one of the most important parts of this resolution. Raising awareness and encouraging civil discussion and cooperative action at, local, at the local level sends a message. It says that we do not have to accept the current climate of divisiveness and public conflict as the norm, nor even as a universal current reality. I hope that in talking about this issue, we are encouraged as a community to deepen our commitment as active stewards and protectors of the natural resources we have been, been given. I anticipate that this resolution will pass, and I thank the Council for its consideration and support. Thank you very much. Um, Mike O'Brien, please. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Mike O'Brien, 70 Acre Brook Drive in Florence. Uh, just call, uh, come up here tonight to talk about some of the uh, logistical concerns and possible misconceptions that may have come forth about the Memorial Basketball Court project that Ryan wrote. Um, in the uh, last meeting, I guess that was the first reading, it was voted on unanimously to accept the gift, but uh, I know some people have maybe uh, reached out to you about some of their concerns. I just want to address those specifically. Um, one of the ones that uh, came forward was they were worried about the cost. It will be a completely privately funded project. No money from the city will be used for the project whatsoever. 
Um, another one that uh, was a bit of concern, um, some people were uh, concerned it might affect the current layout of Ryan Road School. Um, that's actually not the case. No swing sets or baseball fields or playgrounds will be moved in any capacity whatsoever. We'll be using a space that's already been sort of allocated as a play space for the kids. It'll just be improved. So um, another concern that was brought forth was that uh, um, the lights would be on all night. In fact, the basketball court lights would be out before any of the lights at the school, the street lights, the uh, parking lot lights, the lights that go behind the school for security. So the basketball courts would have the least effect there. Um, also that the lights aren't stadium lights. Uh, I think people, they, they heard like an athletic arena, they thought it might look like the lights at Mains Field with the giant towers and giant bulbs. Um, it's actually a much, much smaller scale project than that. The lights would be smaller than the street lamps. Um, they would be also really focused on the space itself. There wouldn't be a lot of extra um, light uh, pollution in the area as well. So that's definitely been taken into consideration already. Um, one concern that was brought forth, uh, or another concern about the lights themselves, they actually won't even be on during the winter time. It's really just when the space would be usable. So if there's snow on the ground, basketball court isn't usable, so the lights won't be on. So when the leaves are down, they won't be bleeding through the trees at all. Uh, also, the last thing, which I thought was a really good point to bring forward, someone was concerned that the space wasn't really designed for elementary school students, which is what that school is for. Um, to that point, we're actually uh, putting in uh, adjustable basketball hoops, hoops that could be lowered for the youngest students at the school. So it will be used for recess, for PE class. It actually has a really practical application in that regard. And I think my favorite part about this project is that it will grow with those students. They're not going to be elementary students forever. So as they grow, those hoops will go higher, and they'll be able to play on that court for many, many years. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Wayne Tebow, please. Wayne Tebow, 830 Chesterfield Road, Florence. I just wanted to make a few comments on uh, the DPW-sponsored uh, week that was May 23rd, the watershed walk at the uh, Mountain Street Reservoir. The 24th was the wastewater plant, and the 25th was the drinking water treatment plant. And I uh, just want to express a few observations and, and what, what I learned with the walk. As far as the watershed walk, it was very informative on problems involved in pr protecting the watersheds, issues concerning invasive species, ways to protect our valuable watershed, and areas that have been ne neglected for too many years. Uh, invasive species such as bittersweet have been allowed for years to grow and choke and kill out many of the trees in the watershed er uh, area. Many of the different tree species throughout our New England area are being destroyed by different insects, diseases, etc. And that we really need to do more to protect our trees, especially in these uh, watershed areas to protect our water resources. On the wastewater treatment plant, was given by the tour was given by Jim Zimmerman. He's a chief engineer there. He's been there for, I believe, 30 years. And it was it was really interesting. Uh, uh, he pointed out a lot of the issues they have with uh, what people dump down the sewers and how it affects the process. And when they put a lot of these different things in there that affect the process, it, it's it's more work for the employees. It takes a lot more chemicals to treat treat the sewage, and uh, some of the and a lot of it uh, kills off the good bacteria, which kills the process. Uh, one thing I learned too that it's it's hard to keep uh, long-term employees there because a lot of guys, even though they offered it to train some of the, the young people working there uh, to get their licenses in that, once a lot of them get their licenses, they they tend to move on to other jobs. So that makes it harder to operate the facility on the supervisor personnel. And the other thing is, it is an old, real old plant that's had upgrades, and I know it's got to have a lot more upgrades, and that makes it tougher too on training new personnel and so forth. And then the, fi the final one, the, the, the water, uh, drinking water plant, that was very interesting. I guess it was built around 2007 or 8. Uh, there was one long-term employee there, and the rest were uh, a, lot of, a lot of young guys. But they gave a real good tour, explained everything, asked questions. And one of the, one of the things that, that I got there, 
that was was of real interest is uh, they do preventive maintenance and uh, uh, trying to save money on overtime call-ins and everything else, and they, they appeared to me to be real dedicated employees. So I just want to say thanks to all the city employees involved for that uh, DPW week. Thank you very much. Uh, Daphne Stevens, please. Uh, this is uh, Daphne Stevens, 56 Fire Thorn. That was a wonderful segue because he was talking about invasives, and I didn't bring any um, bittersweet with me, but I did bring, <laughs> um, well, it's quickly, but it's very invasive, um, garlic mustard. Um, and the reason I brought this was, I'm going to back up where I live more. When I used to walk where I used to live, um, there would be lots of cans around on the sides of the street. There were no water bottles then, so I didn't see any water bottles, just soda cans. And then about 10 years ago, I started noticing this plant, and it was very rare to see it. Now it's absolutely everywhere. You all probably recognize it. Um, most of them have, the flowers have gone to seed. So this is a very bad invasive. Um, poison ivy is another very bad invasive um, and is toxic, as is, um, well, Never mind. Anyway, so today I was walking and look what I found. This is invasive too. I never used to see them, but now you see them everywhere. And this is a toxic invasive like poison ivy is because it has pet in the plastic. It kills a lot of wildlife. Um, and it, as we talked about a few weeks ago, it is taking over our oceans with the five gyres out there. It is taking over that Poor little island that's covered and most of it is water bottles. So we've already discussed how the uh, water isn't as safe as the water in your tap. The bottle is not safe because it is made of plastic and plastic as we know is a petroleum product and you really don't want these petroleum products in your house or on your streets. You want to avoid anything that's uh, invasive. I put that down as an invasive. Thank you very much. Uh, Helen Armstrong, please. My name's Helen Armstrong. I live at 13 Butternut Lane. I talked to the town recycling coordinator, and she referred me to the Sierra Club website because what you left out of the resolution is the cost of disposing of plastic bottles once they've gone into the waste stream. And she said um, she, she, she did not have statistics about how much of the waste stream that Northampton generates is in fact plastic bottles. But she said it's, uh, you certainly find them. And we have a contract with the pedal people who sort them out at the transfer station. <laughs> And that's pretty good. Um, but plastic, nevertheless, is a sort of litter. And as Daphne <coughs> has told us, you find it especially floating in the oceans. When I worked in Africa, I started to see plastic water bottles washing up on the beaches. In fact, there were more water bottles than shells. So they pose a risk to our wildlife on the land and marine life in the water, and the plastic does not biodegrade. Um, the carbon footprint for bottled water is 11 to 31 times greater than that of tap water. This is from the Sierra Club website. Most bottled water is really packaged tap water, and I think we know that Northampton hosts a Coca-Cola plant because of the quality of wa our water, which they're mining and selling elsewhere. So um, bottled water companies are not regulated under the same rigorous standards as public water supplies. So I would say that in order to keep Northampton clean, one of the things that we can do 
at this level is then plastic water bottles in reusable bottles from all municipally funded or administered activities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Molly Hornby Finch, please. Hi, I'm Molly Hornby Finch, and I live at 20, 27 Nipfer Ave. Um, so I'm a senior at Northampton High School, and we're working to reduce the amount of plastic water bottle use there. Um, but it's not enough, and so I think that like making Northampton the first blue community will really um, have a huge impact. And, um, you know, the person who's in charge of running the government in the U.S. is not taking enough action and um, has pulled out of the Paris Agreement. And so this kind of local action really will move the, you know, will reduce the amount of pollution. And so thank you for anonymously um, voting on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, Tina Ingman, please. Hi, I'm Tina Ingman of Park Hill Road. Thank you, councillors, for voting for the Blue Communities Resolution at the last meeting. I spoke in favor of Blue Communities then, and I have one thing to add. Um, our group has a website where we are going to put up information that we've been gathering about um, tap water and bottled water and what other communities are doing. Um, and most of the information will be up there in a few days. Um, and it's called, for now, NorthamptonBlueWater.org. We hope other communities will be inspired by our example. Um, so for another topic, in light of the historic mistake made today by the current administration in D.C., I want to talk for a minute about acting on the climate problem. It's not just Trump who wants us to turn our backs on the rest of the world by saying we will not honor the Paris Climate Agreement. The Republican, the Republican Party flat platform was all about keeping alive the fossil fuel age and preventing the clean energy revolution. Most people in the USA think we should stay in the agreement. Most people know by now that climate change is real. People's awareness of the severity is peeping through the clouds of disinformation. But the new denial is the idea that we can fix this in a gradual fashion. We don't have time for that. We need a rapid World War II style mobilization to transition to clean energy. It doesn't feel like an emergency here, now, but baked in effects of what we're doing now are on delay. Um, this is an issue with a time limit. We in America are not acting as if we only have a handful of years to turn it around. So with our federal government doing opposite of what is needed, America must rely on state and local governments to do the right thing. I'm proud that our city has taken positive steps towards the protection of our common home from the Sustainability Commission, the Plastic Bag Ban, and now Blue Communities. I am hoping that we dramatically ratchet up our actions on climate starting today. I'm not sure exactly what form this takes in our local city, but I believe at this point every decision, every priority list should be done with the climate crisis in mind. And we need to speak loudly to overcome the heavily funded climate disinformation which continues. Remember, we only have a handful of years. We don't have time to wait for a turnaround in Washington. And I think all of our decisions at every level must be overlaid with the goal of maintaining a livable climate in mind, from the state government to our individual homes to our city and town government. And in the style of the day, I want to end with a message I saw on Twitter today from future, futurist Alex Stefan. Core facts of your life. Our planet's in crisis. What core facts in your life? Our planet's in crisis. Time's running out. Success demands huge, fast changes. Predatory delay is everywhere. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's all I have signed up. Does anyone else wish to speak at this moment? 
last chance. Okay. Thank you very much. And I'm going to ask the administrative assistant to please call the roll. Councilor Bidwell. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Labarge. <coughs> Council. Yes. <laughs> Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Nat. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Councilor Sheriff. Here. Okay, we have a quorum, so we may convene. Um, as announces, there, this is a public. There's a public hearing concerning the FY 2018 budget, and this is in accordance with the Charter of Northampton, Massachusetts, Article Seven. Uh, finance and fiscal procedures. Section 7 4 this is an action on the operating budget, a public hearing, and by order of the City Council, a public hearing to be held to consider the proposed FY 2018 budget and hear all persons who wish to be here heard thereon. Uh, Move to open the public hearing. Second. Um, the public hearing is open. Is there anyone who would like to speak to the budget on any item on the budget? We have no one, no one signed up on the list. Um, any, it's anyone who would speak in opposition? Okay. Uh, yes, I'd move to close the public hearing. I second. And a second. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That was a quick public hearing. Um, the, the, uh, uh, now we're up to recognition. Me, One minute I, announcement. I, I mean, it might be appropriate to point out that we had some open public hearings. Good point. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> as far as our process is concerned, we've actually had a number of hearings and discussions relative to the budget. In fact, actually last week um, we, had, uh, we had the department heads to discuss the larger segments of the budget uh, with some participation from the community, including uh, a breakthrough for us. We went live with uh, texting, and we got one text. It was very exciting. Um, but so there, there, and and I should point out that um, while I'd say about six or seven people participated, that's a 700 percent increase from the year past. So I consider that a landmark of some sort. It is. I'm not going to interpret from the absence of discussion. Uh, about the budget that we are, you know, everyone's completely um, excited about it or pleased or whatever. Um, I don't know what to uh, read from that, and it wouldn't be appropriate to. <coughs> but as we go forward and we have, we're going to, this is the most significant portion of our job, actually. The council provides uh, fiduciary oversight of the budget, and hopefully next year we'll maybe, we might be able to generate more interest. Obviously, if there were an override that was pending, that would certainly generate a lot of interest. Uh, but as it stands, as I keep saying, this is our moral document. It's, it's a dry text, but it is a moral document expressing the values that we have and where we choose to invest in our community. So that said, so um, now we go on to recognition of one minute announcements and Councilor LaBarge has one. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Laurie Sullivan, um, who organized putting together the three young girls from JFK holding our mayor and city council banner. They did excellent, and I think all of us councilors who marched want to thank them. They, they were just excellent. And their names are Miley, oh boy, Barrios. Kathleen Sullivan, Sandy, we've been, three of us trying to figure this last name out, Hoheck from JFK. So thank you to the three girls. They did excellent. Uh, anyone else, any other? Holy cats, okay. Now we're up to communications and proclamations from the mayor. The mayor is here and he has some presentations. Um, <coughs> Your Honor, go to the floor. Getting your proclamation. Communicating with my 17 year old. Oh, sorry. Right. I understand. Urgent uh, college deadline stuff. Um, so I did have a proclamation that I wanted to issue tonight, as well as a couple of other items. Um, the, um, the proclamation is actually uh, for June 11, but obviously we will not be meeting between now and then. It's entitled Race Amity Day. 
Whereas in 2015, the Massachusetts legislature passed the Race Amity Act, establishing the second sat Sunday in June of each year as a time for Americans to reflect and affirm the dignity of the diverse racial, cultural, and religious backgrounds that constitutes the United States of America. And whereas the greatest asset of the city of Northampton is its people, and whereas friendship, inclusion, respect, and kindness are shared ideals of our community, and whereas the city of Northampton holds true to the great seal of the United States, states which bears the inscription E Pluribus Unum, which translates from Latin as out of many, one. And whereas organizations and communities across the country, including the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, motivated by the ideal behind the motto of E Pluribus Unum, have joined together in introspection and reflection on how the diversity of our people have been indispensable in creating the United States. And so now, therefore, I am at the end of the to hereby proclaim June 11, 2017, to be Race Amity Day in the city of Northampton. And I ask everyone to recognize this event and to celebrate its annual observance. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the seal of the city of Northampton. Uh, so that is the proclamation I have to issue. Um, the other item I wanted to update you on is you may recall that as part of the capital improvement plan uh, uh, program, um, I came to you uh, following the adoption of that to ask for your authorization for borrowing for several of our large capital projects, um, totaling uh, $3,650,000. $3, um, and so, Subsequent to your approval, um, we have gone through the uh, bonding process, um, and as part of that, we um, received uh, a rating call from Standard & Poor's at which they went over um, uh, sort of our progress over the last year um, financially, looked at our end of year reports, looked at our audited statements um, in anticipation of the bond offering that we'd be doing for this borrowing. Um, Standard & Poor's um, issued not only for the impending bonds that we were issuing, but also for all of our um, current outstanding debt, um, an updated uh, rating uh, affirming our AAA rating. Um, so that just was issued actually about a week ago. And then right after that, um, our uh, financial services agency, First Southwest, uh, did in fact hold a bond uh, auction accepting bids um, from companies on our 10-year uh, general obligation notes, uh, totaling, again, $3.65 million. And this, again, was for our Pulaski Park project, uh, River Road retaining wall, for the MSBA roof projects at Leeds and Bridge. It was our uh, paving uh, projects for next year. It was DPW equipment. Um, and it was the work that we're doing at Forbes Library for um, HVAC and for Windows. Um, there were seven uh, bidders as part of the bond offering, and the, um, the winning uh, bid on our uh, bonds was awarded uh, to a company called uh, Montgomery Scott LLC. But what's most important is that the, the average interest rate um, on those bonds is 1.518 percent, uh, so um, which our which our uh, rating agency said was actually uh, performing better than uh, national uh, communities that are ranked either AA and AAA. So the long and short of it is, our our AAA rating was affirmed, uh, and when we went out to bond, we were able to borrow this you know 3.65 million dollars at a very favorable interest rate. Um, because of the work that uh, we've done as a city uh, to have a strong, strong financial policies, uh, rebuild our reserve, uh, strong management policies, and I wanted to update you on that. So that is the second communication. Uh, and I just want to point out that a copy of the bond rating report from S&P is on the city's website. Um, it's on the mayor's financial page. Um, it's there with all of our previous bond ratings that we receive. Um, and so if people want to read that, um, they can read the full seven-page report. <coughs> the next item on the agenda is, the, um, is a presentation that I wanted to have uh, DPW Director Donald Escalia make to you this evening. As you know, later on on your agenda, 
um, there is a required annual uh, vote of the City Council uh, to either approve or disapprove uh, the stormwater and flood control uh, credit and incentive policy, uh, which the ordinance um, outlines uh, the DPW uh, should uh, submit to the mayor annually. Um, I uh, get to review and, and make modifications and then ultimately approve, and then I submit it to the City Council for approval or disapproval. Um, it's coming up uh, at the end of your agenda tonight, so I wanted to have uh, the director uh, just make a presentation to you. There's actually no change to the policy. Uh, we're not making any change to the policy from the previous fiscal year. Um, so uh, it's uh, essentially we're asking you to approve the FY17 um, uh, policy for FY18. So I'd like to ask uh, Director Lascalia to make a presentation now. And should, should point out that the, originally there was a, uh, Donna was going to come and present before the uh, Public Works Committee, but we didn't have a quorum. So, and she showed up. <laughs> well, we didn't have all the members show up. So, she gets credit for that, and now she's back to, to we said we decided that the presentation would happen in the full council. It's all yours, Donna. Um, I just want to provide a very brief uh, overview of the credit and incentive policy with some statistics of credits that have been issued and kind of dollar amounts associated with them and the types of credits that are available for folks to um, apply for. So just some, some kind of general statistics. Um, there are currently 1,016 parcels that have been approved for credits through this policy out of 11,140 parcels. So a single, pol a single property can apply for more than one credit, and 277 properties have been approved for multiple credits, and I'll run through what the credits are in a moment. Um, no matter the number of credits approved, however, the total reduction in fee is limited to 50% per parcel. There is one exception to that, which I'll get into in a minute. Um, so in summary, there are currently 1,319 approved credits with a total value of $76,368. So fairly significant amounts, both in, in number of parcels and dollar value. So there are 19 different credits that are available for people to apply for, and they fall into eight categories. So I'll run through the eight categories. There's what we call the small residential stormwater improvement credit. So this is like a rain garden, porous pavement and pavers, a dry well. Um, this offers up to a 25% fee reduction. And as of May of this year, two parcels have been approved for these credit with a total value of $100. We also have what's called the NPDES permit credit. NPDES stands for National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. This offers a 10% fee reduction and applies to properties having a permit from the National Stormwater Program for a separate stormwater drain system. One parcel has been approved for this credit. The value is $181. We have educational programs credit. These would apply to educational entities. 10% fee reduction to increase awareness of stormwater issues through public education and outreach. There have been no applications received for this credit. We have protected land credits. So this would be like Chapter 61, conservation restriction land, agricultural preservation restriction land. Um, these, are, these are actually quite popular. 830 parcels have been approved for these credits. Total value of $32,970. We also have a commonly owned undeveloped land credit. So distinction here between undeveloped land and protected land. So undeveloped land just means there's no development on it. And this is sort of a variable credit, but a, a single owner can combine multiple uh, undeveloped parcels so long as they are contiguous. And there is a reduction of, of pervious area. Uh, stormwater best management practice credits. So this, again, is a variable free re fee reduction, 25% or 50%. Um, it is an incentive for larger property owners to construct and maintain stormwater control systems that help reduce the downstream impact of stormwater runoff. So these are, these are typically requirements of a stormwater management 
um, permit that we would issue for development. And so basically we are giving folks credit for adhering to the requirements in their permit. 108 parcels have been approved for these credits with a value of $20,236. Um, so this is the one exception that I talked about, um, and this is called the Dedicated Stormwater Management Property Credit. This is a 100% fee reduction. So this is the one credit that you can, that, that is possible that, that credits the entire fee. Um, this provides relief to properties such as subdivisions and homeowners associations that have a separate parcel that's dedicated solely to stormwater management such as like a detention or a retention basement, basin. Um, Parsons Brook Homeowners Association is, a, is an example of, of where this would occur. So three parcels have been approved for this credit. Fee credit value is $326. And the final category is assessor's tax exemption based credits. So this is a 50% fee reduction, um, provides economic relief to qualifying seniors as well as low income property owners. 329 property owners have been approved for these credits. The value is $20,485. So that's an overview of the current credit and incentive policy and the proposed the, credit and incentive policy. You're prepared to take questions if the council has questions? Any uh, council Yeah. Um, Donna, who do the residents talk to on the credit program that you have? Who handles that? Um, they can direct their questions to Katie Sakowitz, who's the Stormwater Utility Administrator, and I can get her contact information for you. What's the extension there? I, I don't know. They can call the, the main number and, uh, and ask to be transferred to her. They can also use your new email address. They can do that, yes. They, they can, can do what? They can visit our website and there's, right. a, there's a link to, uh, a DP, it's called DPW Info is our new um, email address and, and they, can, uh, they can send their queries. I do have to say, when all this came out the first time, even at our home, we had difficulties getting somebody to come to our house. So didn't other people too. I have people right now who have the rain barrels and they're not happy with it. I have great concerns from way back of asking somebody to come, take a look at your property, take a look at the plant or whatever, and it's never happened. So hopefully now we'll get a hold of Katie. Sure, I, I can't speak to the past, but what I can say is that we, um, we run a tight operation and uh, please encourage them to contact Katie. And, I'll and do we'll that. Do what we can. Okay, great, thank you. And, and we should be clear, this is, um, for the incentive programs, not for um, if someone's appealing their um, assessment. I understand. Just so we're clear, so the public understands that um, the program mm -hmm. we're talking about here is to for credits. <coughs> for credits incentive program. Yeah. Right. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Klein, and then Councilor Shara. Hi. I just thank you very much for that information. It's very helpful. Um, I'm just wondering if it's available on the website or if you can share it with us. Um, just so that we have it the in case statistics. People, yeah, sure. I can. I can. Do, it, it's this is not currently posted on the website, um, but I can make sure that it it gets to you. Thank you. Great, Councilor Shara. Um, just just to clarify, since it was mentioned before, the rain barrel program that is a um, you can buy them from the city at a reduced cost, but they don't qualify for an as an incentive or um, a percent. Yes, that's because. not covered under this incentive policy. The, the incentive there is the reduced right. cost. Um, yeah. Other questions? Um, yeah, and I, I think for the public at large, if they're trying to follow along and figure out just what the hell it is we're talking about, actually, with the stormwater fee, you have an opportunity to, the, the idea is the carrot versus stick. This is to promote um, the reduction of uh, Stormwater from running off your property and whatever, and these are programs to give you an opportunity to uh, to take advantage of of the uh, uh, discounts that you can get on the on the stormwater and flood control fee uh, by doing some aspect of mitigation. It's also, and I wanted to ask, or just to clarify, the 100% exempt properties. Uh, the exemption only applies to the parcel that actually has the 
system that's contained that that manages the stormwater, not not for the developed property. That is correct. It's it's the actual parcel that has the swale or the retention pond or whatever. Okay. Correct. Any other questions? Thank you, Donna. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. And I, it, it, does Donna need to stay f until we get to the second to last item on the agenda, or is everyone okay with? Is it in finance? Hmm? But it's pretty late in the agenda. Does? Well, it's not finance agenda I saw, so. It's yeah, I, I thought it was, I think it's. It's in orders. But in any event, does, ever, does anyone have any other questions that they think they'd need to ask now? Oh. Okay. No. So, so, yeah. Okay, so back to the agenda. And that brings us to the resolution. Uh, this is a second reading for item 17.311. And that's a resolution to have Northampton, Massachusetts become a blue community. And this, as I said, this is the second reading. I'll accept a motion. Move to approve. Second. Uh, discussion? Councilor Klein? Um, I had suggested um, possibly changing the order of some of the whereases, and um, Councillor Bidwell, who's not here, actually wrote something up that seemed um, acceptable to me. I th I hope that he submitted it. It is. It's a. Is it in our? Okay. So um, basically, any concern that I had about just kind of supporting uh, the order of things so that one whereas uh, supported the one before it or after it was taken care of with his change. So I just want to say that I really sub I appreciate that Councillor Bidwell um, took care of the amendment, and uh, I think it's great. Um, well, it's not in the uh, original one. You need to amend right, it. Right. That's what I was just going to say. We have to add that amendment on the. Oh, so add, add that I move to amend as uh, Councillor Bidwell submitted. So what Council Bidwell has submitted, just so before anyone considers it a second, um, I have it as the be it further resolved order, right? And it's um, yeah, you down as it reads, be it further resolved that water bottle filling stations uh, will be installed in municipal facilities and parks whenever and wherever feasible. Uh, be it further resolved that the availability of water jugs or dispensers with municipal water should be increased at municipally organized meetings and events. And be it further resolved that where at, uh, access to municipal water exists, single use bottled water should no longer be sold in municipal facilities from municipally owned or municipally administrated or administered, I'm sorry, uh, concessions or from vending machines in public facilities. And be it further resolved that single use water should no longer be purchased and provided at municipal meetings or events where access to municipal water exists. And be it further resolved that local businesses and institutions are encouraged to install water bottle filling stations and encourage their use as an alternative to single used. I think we, we were going to strike that single D use. on that. So we'll do that as a scrivener as a single use bottle of water whenever possible. Um, Move to approve. Okay, so there's, that's the amendment, and there's a second on that. And discussion on the amendment? No discussion on the amendment. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So back to the original order. Um, any discussion on that point? No. Uh, just like to reiterate my gratitude to uh, Bill Diamond. Who's, whose work and organizing in this is really pretty remarkable. Uh, he, you know, he, when he originally came to me, I asked him if he could um, reap some uh, community interest, and he did. He did. In fact, he got the environmental club at the high school, which was actually, they are co-sponsors on this. And uh, in, I, I think it was said in public comment, the fact that this is a citizen's initiative, this was originally proposed and promoted by citizens of the community, and, uh, it, and, it's, and in, oddly enough, it's sort of coordinated perfectly or dovetailed perfectly with many of the issues that we've been discussing now for the last several weeks at least and, and, and historically. Uh, over many sessions, and it's the protection of the uh, the watershed. It's protection of our, our water supply, as Councilor O'Donnell had, 
uh, uh, sponsored an ordinance that we passed unanimously to protect from privatization. Actually, I'm not sure it was unanimous. No, it wasn't unanimous. That's right. There was there were. <laughs> that's right. There was a dissent. Um, but it did pass with well, the significant majority, we'll say, and uh, and and there's been a lot of community talk about this, and that's I mean you know that in in and of itself is what resolutions more or less do is to promote that conversation and discussion, and, and I I'm very grateful for all the work, the hard and heavy, the hard work that's been done previously, and the heavy lift that folks have, have committed to this, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be one of the sponsors. Okay. Uh, what's your preference? Roll call or just a roll call? Roll call vote. Okay. Pam? Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Boyd? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Clark? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sherry? Yes. That passes in second reading. Uh, now we come to the consent agenda. Bear with me as I read through this. This is item 17.322. This is the reappointment of Jeff Jones of 76 Wood Road in Florence as Northampton Housing Authority representative to the Community Preservation Commission. And this is to be referred to the Committee on City Services. Um, there's a note this committee, this appointment will be uh, taken up by the Committee on City Services at its July meeting, currently scheduled for July 10th, uh, per City Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22. Item 17.323, uh, that's to approve a petition for renewal of a secondhand dealer license. This is Ryan's Jewelers at 14 Strong Avenue. <laughs> Item 17.324, that's to approve a petition for supervised uh, display of fireworks for the Northampton Family Fourth event. And then also uh, to approve minutes of the May 18th, 2017 City Council meeting. Did I miss? What did I miss? No, we have another appointment. Craig Dorsey. Am I looking at the wrong one? Mine doesn't have it on here. Mine doesn't have that either. Uh, it's a real appointment. Uh, 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 let me see if I got the most updated version of this. <coughs> Two? Yeah. Do uh, you have a copy of that so I can see it? It's okay. Um, item 17.336, that's an appointment to the Historical Commission that's referred to Committee on City Services. And that would be Craig Delatana of 62 Chestnut Street, Florence. Move we approve the consent agenda. Okay. The motion's made. There's a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I missed who the second was. Uh, the second was Council Labarge. Thank you. Okay. Now we go into recess for the Committee on Finance, where <laughs> Council Murphy will be presiding as we vote on the budget. Excellent. It's all yours. Wait for Pam to get the right paperwork here. Would you call our roll, please? Council Murphy. Here. Council Carney. Present. Council Labarge. Present. Council Nash. Here. And the first item um, that we need to do is approve the minutes of our last meeting, which would have been at the council meeting on May 18th. Now the agenda says May 4th, um, but we need to amend it to be the 18th because that's when the meeting actually was. So do we have a motion to amend to the? Uh, so moved. Second, finance. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So officially it now says the 18th. Um, so. Move approval of the minutes. Second. Second. Excellent, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. And uh, the first thing then, as uh, as advertised, um, is the general fund budget. So this is 17.325, an order to approve general fund budget for FY uh, 2018. Order that the sum of $87,200,000 and $95,399, which is the full amount necessary for fiscal year 2018 general fund budget, that would be July 1 to June 30, be appropriated for said stated purposes, provided that the appropriation for Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School shall be used solely for the purposes of meeting net school spending as defined by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And no funds so appropriated should be transferred to any account or expended for any purpose that would not be included in the calculation of net school spending. To meet this appropriation, 
and $97 will be raised and appropriated from the parking meter receipt for reserves, 10,000 from the Cemetery Perpetual Care Trust Fund, 5,000 from the Cemetery Sale of Lots Receipt Reserved, $1 million $1,001,057 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund, $701,764,000 from the Water Enterprise Funds, $116,014 from the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund, $276,993 from the Stormwater Enterprise Fund, $5,000 from the Wetland Filing Fees, $1,500 from the Waterways Fund, $13,609 from Community, Community Preservation Act Administrative Funds, $27,373 from the Reserve for Police Station Debt Service, and um, $83,341,292 will be raised and appropriated. Uh, we have a motion? Yes, second in finance. Um, We've had uh, a lot of discussion on this. We've had public meetings on this. I know the mayor and the finance director are here if we have any last questions before we send this on to full council for, for first reading. Are there any questions from anyone in finance or anyone from the council in general? Everybody is comfortable with it at this point? Then in finance, all in favor of a positive recommendation to council, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. Um, the next item is for enterprise funds. Uh, this is a motion to approve FY18 enterprise funds uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the sum of $6,270,000, which is the full amount necessary for fiscal year 18 sewer enterprise fund budget, again, July 1, 17 to June 30th, 18 appropriated for the purposes stated and to meet said appropriation five million two hundred and sixty eight thousand nine hundred and forty two dollars is to be raised from sewer receipts and one million one dollar one one million one thousand fifty eight dollars shall be allocated to indirect costs um, and uh, some of the sources for the uh, Actually, do you want me to read them all the way through, or are you comfortable? I think you should. You want to hear them all? Great. Uh, the Sewer Enterprise Fund, $1,568,608 from the sewer uh, for general sanitary sewer. Sewer treatment, $2,180,638. Uh, sewer debt service, $391,986. Sewer interest, $77,822. Sewer indirect costs, $1,000,000. Um, one thousand and fifty-eight dollars, <coughs> and uh, sewer reserve for capital projects one million forty-nine thousand eighty-eight dollars. Uh, total sewer enterprise funds six million two hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Move oh. approval. Or do you want to move them? Take so them as a group. Oh, okay. They're all under the same one, so I'll just go <coughs> on to the next one then. Um, and again, uh, the, this is also. Um, for enterprise funds, order that the sum of seven million six hundred and forty-six dollars, forty-six thousand six hundred eighty dollars, which is the full amount necessary for fiscal year eighteen water enterprise fund budget, July one, seventeen to June thirty eighteen, be appropriated for the purposes stated and to meet the appropriation that six million one hundred twenty-eight thousand two hundred thirty-six dollars is to be raised from water receipts and seven hundred and $1,764 shall be allocated to direct costs and $816,680 shall be transferred from the water stabilization fund. <coughs> for uh, the funds will be used for general water, $3,525,121. Water treatment, $1,176,697. A water debt service, $1,770,300 um, and $86. Water interest, $463,712. And indirect cost for water, $701,764 for a grand total of $7,646,680. Uh, we move on to solid waste, ordered the sum of 
$259, is, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year 18 Solid Waste Enterprise Fund budget, again July 1 to June 30, 18. The appropriated for the purposes stated and to meet the appropriation, the $355,486 is to be raised from the solid wa waste receipts, that $116,014 shall be allocated to indirect costs and $127,759 to be made available from the undesignated fund balance uh, of the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund. So uh, Solid Waste Transfer Station, 483,245. Solid Waste Direct and Indirect Costs, $116,014 for a grand total of $599,259. And then the last one um, is Stormwater. Order that the sum of $1,957,588, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year 2018 Stormwater Flood Control Enterprise Fund, July 1, 17 to June 30, 18, be appropriated for the purposes stated and to meet said appropriation that $1,680,565 is to be raised from the stormwater flood control receipts and $276,993 shall be allocated to indirect costs. Um, the stormwater flood control drain operations will be $1,235,367. Uh, stormwater and flood control operations will be $323,587. Uh, stormwater flood control debt will be $40,000. Stormwater flood control interest will be $6,250. Stormwater flood control indirect costs will be $276,993. And stormwater stabilization fund will be $75,361 for a grand total of $1,957,558. We have a motion. Second. 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 Any questions on any <coughs> council? Um, Susan, uh, the, it is uh, relative to the stormwater indirect costs. There have been some remarks and comments made that uh, um, the indirect costs were not included in, in the discussion and the debate of establishment of the stormwater fee. And I wonder if you could explain, or Your Honor, uh, the breakdown on the indirect costs and. Well, she can certainly go through that. It's, there's a page in your book on all the indirects. Right. No, no. And, and, I, and I understand they're all itemized for the, for the total of uh, $276,000. Sure. So I can, I'll have Susan Dabba, but just as a general observation, uh, we were creating an enterprise fund, uh, and that was certainly discussed, and actually, um, it was heavily scrutinized during the whole process, so much so that we actually looked at all of the indirects for all of our enterprise funds as part of the public conversation. Um, so we went through a pretty exhaustive review of that. So um, I'm, I'm unsure how anyone could have assumed that there'd be no indirect costs since during the actual debate on, uh, on the creation of the utility, we had a separate debate about indirect costs and refined them. So and started including them actually in that in the first budget as part of the um, as that included the enterprise the new enterprise fund it's it's pro forma with enterprise fund well it's certainly part of how it's part of how they're structured um, and again indirect and direct costs you'll find them for the school department you'll find them for smith vocational um, it's a very you know common uh, you know way that we do municipal accounting and it's the same thing with our enterprise funds. So and, and the indirect costs um, essentially are the costs associated with the administration of, of the uh, services. Director Lascalier mentioned the stormwater administrator earlier. Uh, no, so the stormwater administrator salary, for example, is paid out of that. Her health insurance benefits are not part of the DPW budget. Um, none of our health insurance benefits are in, in any individual budget. So in addition to paying for the salary, it also pays for the um, health insurance benefits for that employee as well. So that would be an example of an indirect cost. Mm -hmm. um, the billing services that the collector uh, and treasurer collector's office provides for the utility, again, it's not in the uh, stormwater enterprise fund budget, um, but it's billed to the enterprise fund budget for that percentage of the bills that are for the stormwater bills. Same thing with your water and sewer bills. That's generally, and I can have the finance director go through the specifics for that particular utility. Right. So, so my understanding is that 
all the, all the costs associated with the administration and application of this is folded in to the indirect costs to uh, to have a comprehensive coverage of the service in fact it's not just it, the money doesn't but the vast uh, amount of the money is devoted and dedicated to direct uh, projects as opposed to the administration but there is a cost associated with that and to fob it off somewhere else wouldn't would would just be creating a category that uh, of a slush fund well the taxpayers would be paying for costs that are actually part should be borne by the ratepayers would right. be the effect right so right then it would come out of the general fund and you may have and you do have some uh, rate payers who are not taxpayers right. in some cases may not even be city residents but they may own you know a system and so, so so it would be de facto a double dipping then I don't know I don't know whether it's a double proper. dipping but I mean I'm just saying that the whole idea is that you know the utilities each of the enterprise funds operates as a separate cost center and so um, just like a business you know I don't know, like an LLC where you have, you know, individual cost centers for each each components of that business. You're gonna you're gonna attribute all of the both the direct and the indirect expenses. You're gonna apportion them to the individual cost centers, and that's what we do with the enterprise funds. Thank you, Councilor Nell. And, and maybe one other point would be, if you didn't do indirects, you would make the system vastly more expensive because you uh, have the ability now to, for example, have administrative support from just the DPW in general as opposed to create an entire new system. Well, that's the thing. System. If, you, if I mean, you wanted to have the Stormwater Enterprise hire a separate billing right. company to issue separate bills to do... So know, it's a, it's saves a lot of money it, for, it to do an essential service. Yeah. 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 Thank so you. it's... Yeah, exactly. All right. Any other questions in finance? Uh, these enterprise budgets. Um, hearing none. All all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> All right, the, the next one we're going to are the 2018 revolving fund accounts. And some of these are pretty self-explanatory and some I'll give a little more detail on, on what they're used for. Uh, fund number 2420 is the Energy and Sustainability Revolving Fund. Allowable expenditures include materials, expenses, and contracted services associated with projects programs and policies that increase the level of energy efficiency and energy resource sustainability. This is administered by S the Director of Central Services with the approval of the Northampton Energy Sustainability Commission and the Mayor. The uh, an annual spending limit on this one is $150,000. The next one is a hazmat revolving fund. It's administered by the Fire Chief. Allowable expenditures include purchase and replacement of materials, equipment, and protective gear, ve vehicle repair and maintenance. Um, preparedness training and activities for any purpose connected with the HAZMAT program. Um, that's $85,000 spending limit. The DPW Public Works Construction Services Revolving Fund, uh, obviously the DPW Director with the approval of the Mayor is the authorizing agent. Allowable expenditures include the purchase of materials, equipment, and vehicles for the Department of Public Works as well as related construction costs on construction projects involving any of the divisions of DPW. The Senior Services Transportation Revolving Fund is administered by the Director of Senior Services. It's a $100,000 limit. Allowable expenditures include vehicle acquisition, repair and maintenance, gasoline, mileage reimbursements, contracted services, salary stipends, and other expenses directly related to the operation of the transportation of the seniors. Senior Service Activities Revolving Fund, again, Director of Senior Services um, is authorized on this one. It's a $90,000 revolving fund. Allowable expenditures include expenses related to activities, programs, and services offered by senior services, including salary stipends and employee benefits. The senior Services Gift Shop Revolving Fund. Again, the Director of Senior Services administers. It's a $20,000 limit. Expenditures include purchases of gift shop merchandise, sales tax, contracted services, and expenses related to activities, programs, and services offered by the seniors services uh, folks including salary stipends and employee benefits senior services food service revolving fund again administered by the director of senior services thirty five thousand dollar fund uh, allowable expenditures include kitchen equipment supplies meals food contracted services and expenses related to the operation of the food service program at the senior center 
Senior Services Publication Revolving Fund. Again, Director of Senior Services administers so a $35,000 fund. Allowable expenditures include printing, postage, advertisements, uh, office supplies, and other expenses directly related to the creation and distribution of senior publications. Uh, senior Trips and Travel Revolving Fund, again, Director of Senior Services administers. It's a $75,000 revolving fund. Expenses um, include contracted services, admission fees, reservations, postage, publicity, travel, refreshments, office supplies, and other expenses directly related to the promotion impl and implementation of travel opportunities, including <coughs> stipends and employee benefits. Athletic League Fees Revolving Fund. This one is administered by the Director of Parks and Recreation. It's a $200,000 fund. Expenditures include salaries, employee benefits, expenses, and contracted services required to operate athletic leagues and programs for city residents supervised directly by the Rec Department. Uh, JFK Family Aquatic Center, again uh, administered by the Parks and Recreation Director. It's a $120,000 fund. Expenditures include any uh, anything relative to maintaining, equipping, and staffing and, uh, and operating the JFK Aqu Aquatic Center, uh, including salaries and employees up there at the pool. Um, North Anthem Public Schools Transportation Revolving Fund, administered by the Superintendent of Schools. It's a $200,000 fund. Allowable expenditures include contracted services, vehicle acquisition and repair, maintenance, and any expenses related to the administration of the fee-based transportation program. Page two. The Smith uh, Vocational High School Farm Revolving Fund. This is administered by the Superintendent of Schools. It's a $100,000 fund. Allowable expenditures include farm animals, vehicle repair, maintenance, gasoline, contract services and salaries, and employee benefits related to the operation of the Smith Folk Farm. Uh, the Tourism Directional Sign Program Revolving Fund. It's administered by the Department of Public Works uh, right. along with the approval of the mayor. It's a $10,000 fund. Expenditures include materials, supplies, and equipment, uh, as well as labor relative to the erection and maintenance of tourism signs on any of the city streets. Public Health Nursing Program Revolving Fund. It is administered by the Director of the Health Department. It's a $20,000 fund. Expenditures include support for the work of the Public Health Nursing Program, including the purchases of vaccines and other pharmaceuticals, medical and office equipment, professional equipment for nursing staff, contract staff, and associated education and outreach materials. And again, it's a $20,000 fund. James House Revolving Fund is administered by the Director of Central Services. It's an $85,000 fund. Expenditures include the maintenance of the property, including salaries, employee benefits, equipment, supplies, materials, repairs, utilities, plowing, landscaping, and capital expenditures, printing, advertising, signage, and other costs for the administration of the James House. The Sharps Disposal Program Revolving Fund, again, administered by the D Director of Public Health. Uh, it's a $15,000 fund. Expenditures include the cost of Sharps Disposal Containers, community education material, and other medical and office equipment needed to run the program. The Fire Alarm Monitoring Program Revolving Fund. Um, this is administered by the Director of the Dispatch Center. It's a $60,000 revolving fund. Allowable expenditures include salaries, employee benefits, equipment repair and maintenance, contracted services and other expenses related to the operation of the Public Safety Dispatch Center. And um, the DPW Re Reuse Committee is the last revolving fund. Direct Director of uh, Public Works administers it. It's a $15,000 fund. Expenditures include advertising expenses, tipping fees, swap shop operations, office supplies, expenses related to the conducting of workshops, fundraisers, and public events for reuse. And those are the revolving funds. We have a motion in front. Make a motion. Second. Second. Any questions on these for the mayor <coughs> or the finance director? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, okay, next. Um, is in order to approve free cash to the capital stabilization fund and fiscal stability funds. And if you'll recall, this is us shuffling money into these various uh, stabilization reserve accounts. Uh, the first one is 17.328, in order to approve free cash to capitalization, capital stabilization, stabilization <coughs> and fiscal stability funds. Order that $450,000 be appropriated from the FY17 general 
fund undesignated fund balance to the following accounts. $100,000 to capital stabilization, $100,000 to stabilization, and $250,000 to fiscal stability. Do we have a motion in finance? Make a motion. Second? Second. And the mayor has uh, some details for us. And as you said, Mr. Chair, this is something we do at the end of the fiscal year. Uh, free cash will go away um, as of June 30th. So it's been our practice the last several years to allocate portions of it to our to um, our actually our three stabilization funds, capital, uh, our, our regular stabilization fund, and then this fiscal stability fund. So this will um, bring our free cash balance um, down to uh, about 70, a little over $77,000 as we close out the fiscal year, mm -hmm. um, which should be sufficient to cover any issues between now and the end of the fiscal year. And again, the, this money comes from uh, leftover dollar amounts from almost every city budget source. You know, it gets turned back if it doesn't get used. If there's a department vacancy or if things come in under budget, it gets turned back in and then we put it into various stabilization funds to spend on projects that perhaps were unanticipated later on. This is where, for instance, we pay for like snow and ice coverage above and beyond what we budget. That's right, and you'll have another order in, in this agenda that's for that same reason, and you used, uh, we used an, uh, a, a significant amount of free cash for the, um, for capital as well, for our capital plan, so. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions for the mayor? Hearing none, then do we have a positive recommendation coming from finance? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right, the next one is 17329. This is an order to approve $29,925 from free cash and a gift of $10,000 from Ray Ellerbrook's Memorial Fund to pay uh, for the play structure at Arcanum Field. Whereas the play structure at Arcana Field was destroyed by fire on April 10th, 2017, whereas the city has received an insurance settlement in the amount of $29,925, which will flow to the city's undesignated fund balance for fiscal year 18, and whereas the Ray Ellerbrook Memorial Fund has also pledged a contribution of $10,000 towards the replacement of the play structure. Now order that $29,925 be appropriated from the FY17 general fund on designated fund balance for the purposes of purchasing and installing a new updated play structure at Arcanum Field. And in addition to that appropriation, the City of Northampton City Council gratefully accepts the donation of $10,000 from the Ray Ellerbrook Memorial Fund and in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, approves the use of the gifted funds as requested by the donor for, for a new and updated play structure at Arcanum Field. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second? Okay. Any questions for Fairly the mayor? Self-explanatory. Obviously, um, I want to offer our thanks to the Ray Ellerbrook Memorial Fund for contributing this $10,000 to help supplement the um, insurance settlement. And I know that uh, Director Mo Emery Mogio is going to be working on uh, getting that play structure replaced. So, all in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. The next is 17330. This is in order to appropriate free cash and approve the use of gift funds uh, for the police department firing range project. Order that $50,000 be appropriated from the FY17 general fund undesignated fund balance to the police department firing range project to install, um, to install necessary but unanticipated air handling components to complete the firing range project. And in addition to that appropriation, the city council approves the use of $1,046. Oh, no, no, no. Hmm? Oh, yes. So it's it's, it's one th only 1,000 this time. I know we've been throwing around big numbers, but $1,046.65 in donated funds to the police department and in accordance with Massachusetts General Law 44, Section 53A, approves the use of these funds towards the cost associated with the firing project. Do we have a uh, motion of finance? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Eddie? So um, as the counselors may recall, we did have as part of a cap uh, capital project uh, last year, the completion, finally the completion of the uh, firing range at the police station, which had to be value engineered out of the original um, project uh, because of cost constraints. Um, that work has been moving along. Um, the actual, most of the internal components of the range have been installed. Um, they have encountered a uh, HVAC issue 
um, that they need to address that we don't have enough money in the budget for. Um, and so we are uh, asking for this $50,000, which we uh, may not need all of it, but we want to have it so that they can get the range completed. Um, and hopefully this will uh, finalize it. There's a long, um, basically the range has a whole uh, complex air circulation system that basically takes the, the lead out of the air and recycles it back. And there's some issues around this long 100 foot run um, in terms of the velocity. And so they need to do some additional work on it. So that's what this is for. And um, uh, we do need to get this done because uh, I think as Chief Casper noted that uh, there's no, uh, they actually took money out of their budget for hiring the outside range in anticipation of the range <laughs> being completed. So uh, provides us more incentive to get the, the to get our own range completed this year. Any other questions for the mayor on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, next is 17332. It's in order to approve the purchase of eight acres north of Route 66 in Mineral Hills for $200,000 and to approve the borrowing for such purpose. Order that whereas the open space and recreation multi-use plan 2011 to 18 recommends expansion of the Mineral Hills Conservation Area and provision of new greenways between existing protected areas and where the owners of eight acres north of Route 66 and Minerals Hills have agreed to sell their property for $200,000 and whereas the property will provide cultural history of the West Farms area historic use for mining and will provide connection between recent acquisitions in Mineral Hills and whereas the Massachusetts local acquisitions for natural diversity grants provides up to 64% reimbursement reimbursement for the acquisition of certain conservation areas and is a reimbursement program which is, requires the city to demonstrate that it has all the funds necessary to acquire conservation properties prior to state reimbursement. Uh, therefore, order that the Conservation Commission is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation and passive recreation purposes as provided by Mass General Law. Chapter 40, subsection 8C, any fee, easement, or conservation restriction as defined in Mass General Law, Chapter 184, subsection 31, or any other interest in the above land and any immediately adjoining land, and the City Council hereby accepts such conservation restrictions, that the Conservation Commission is authorized to grant conservation restrictions on any land so acquired, and the Conservation Commission is authorized contract for and expend any federal, state, or other aid available uh, for this project, including any grant from the Division of Conservation Services of the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Affairs under the Land Self-Help Act, Mass General Law, Chapter 123A, Subsection 11. Further, that 200000 is appropriated for such acquisition that to meet the appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow the $200,000 under Mass General Law, Section 44, Subsection 7, and that the Conservation Commission is authorized to contract for any federal, state, or other aid available for this project, including any grant from the Division of Conservation Services of the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs under the Land Self-Help Act, Chapter 123A, Subsection 11 of the General Laws. Further, that any grants, donation, or sales shall be used to reimburse open space funds used for this purpose. We have a motion in Make a motion to second. recognize Sarah LaValle also. And uh, yes, again, this is one of these ones where we're asking for your authorization. We're applying for a grant, and our conservation planner can talk to you about the actual parcel. Very good. <coughs> All right, so I have a, a few slides that show um, the context of this acquisition. The Conservation Commission typically applies for a, a land grant every year if we have something lined up. Happily, this year we do. Um, it's a reimbursable grant, as the order noted, so we have to demonstrate that the funding is available. It will not be utilized under any circumstances. Um, it, this is one of the Commission's big priorities for the year. We've made some progress in expanding the Mineral Hills to the south. Um, the, the parcels to be acquired are shown in blue. And the, the light green parcel that connects Route 66 and Glendale Road was our most recent acquisition in this area. And a, a little bit earlier this spring, you approved another acquisition in this area, which isn't shown because we don't own it yet, but it is directly to the west of these parcels. Sarah, you just mentioned something to the effect of Glendale Road. 
where is this property? Um, so this is on the north side of Route 66. Um, if you're if you're driving west on 66 from the center of town, you, you drive through West Farms. Um, you go around the there's a few West big, Farms big is to the right of the intersection. Yeah, so you go past that, and these properties are on the right. Who owns it? Uh, the Walker family. The who? The Walker family. They're they're no longer local. Number two, item two. Okay. Is there do you is is there frontage? On that property there is there's actually a common driveway that was constructed that we could happily use for a, a parking area and access to the mineral hills but these have been on the market for some time because at the two hundred thousand dollars that's why I was questioning if there was frontage because that would have been a very high price without no frontage yes okay. there's no there's well, definitely frontage they're, they're could very actually put an affordable housing on there too uh, they're, they're right? fairly high on lots at, at this what um, I, I don't think the current owner would be interested. So the, the city, I was just thinking yeah, the, the city's habitat interested. or whatever. Yeah, I, it, it seemed to make more sense to us to preserve it rather than develop it. We always try to yeah. provide affordable housing where it makes sense, but it didn't really seem to in this case. And, yeah, these were marketed for some time. I assume, yeah. Not yeah. That's why they're going in this direction. Uh, were there other questions in audience of Sarah for this, these two parcels? Right, hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And uh, we've got another one for Sarah, I guess. Another one. Upon the recommendation of the mayor and the Office of Planning and Sustainability, this is 17.333. This is in order to approve $600,000 for the purpose of improving public re recreational facilities and to borrow 600000 under Mass General Law Section 44B, 44B Subsection 11 and Mass General Law Section 44 Subsection 8C and to contract for any federal, state, or other aid including grants available for this project and to authorize the mayor or his designee to take such actions as necessary to carry out the terms and purposes of this grant. Whereas the Northampton Multi-Use Trail Network is a regional recreational resource that also uh, decreases vehicular traffic and promotes healthy lifestyles and where, whereas the open space and recreation multi-use trail plan 2011 to 18 prioritizes creation of neighborhood connections and spurs to increase access to the Norwatic Mass Central Rail Trail, specifically a ramp near Look Park and, and a connection from Leeds to Wales. And whereas the city has implemented trail connections and expansions over time as funding has become available to meet its trail development goals and whereas the Massachusetts Parkland Acquisition and Renovations for Communities grant program provides up to 64% reimbursement for preservation and restoration of Oregon parks um, and is a reimbursement program which requires the city to demonstrate that it has all the funds necessary to acquire conservation properties prior uh, to state reimbursement, uh, order that the City Council appropriate $600,000 for the purpose of improvements of public recreational facilities. And to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow $600,000 under Mass General Law 44, Mass General Law, Section 44B, Subsection 11, Mass General Law, Section 44. Um, subsection 8C and to contract for any federal, state, or other aid available for the project, including any grant from the Division of Conservation Services of the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs under the Park Act, Chapter 933 of the Acts of 1977 as amended and any other way connected with the scope of this article and the Northampton Office of Planning and Sustainability is authorized to enter into all agreements and execute any and all instruments as may be necessary on behalf of the city of Northampton and the mayor may and that the mayor be and is hereby authorized to take any such action as necessary to carry out the terms purposes and conditions of this grant to be administered by the Office of Planning and Sustainability we have a motion on this one make a motion second all right, so another grant application. As you know, we are always working to improve our uh, multi-use trail network. Uh, it takes a long time. It's very expensive, but the rewards really pay off. So the arrows uh, show where uh, these ramps are proposed. Uh, one on the north side of, of Look Park, and the other is a connection to the town of Williamsburg. Um, again, we're just demonstrating commitment for the reimbursable park grant. This is the same grant program that funded the bulk of Pulaski Park in addition to CPA funds. 
and the next slide shows why this work is necessary. Uh, so on the left, this is the affinity path that people have created to get down to the parking lot by the former Look restaurant. There are some off ramps um, a little bit farther south, but people want to go where they want to go and they're going to keep using this. Um, so it's important to, to get people on and off the trail where it makes sense. And the, the second picture is shows where the trail just abruptly stops and, and leads on the way to Williamsburg. Williamsburg has work, been working diligently to upgrade their section of the path and we have just a little bit more to go. So we want to get it wrapped up and make an actual connection. Excellent. Any specific questions for Sarah on these projects? Councilor? So just so I'm clear that you're going to build a ramp down into the look parking lot? No, it, that, the picture was just to demonstrate that people really want to oh. get off the trail at that point and get, get some juice at the gas station okay. and, and get off on Well, I'm sorry, but you're going to build a ramp. Uh, uh, an off ramp, yeah, but not in that this exact location. Okay. Just near there. Could you, I'm sorry, where where exactly is it? I'm you. Uh, on the Maybe I should know, but I don't. I, I'm a little bit late to the game on this project, so oh. I don't know exactly where, but we do okay. have construction documents available I can certainly share with you. Well, I can look at those before second reading. I mean, it seems yeah. like a good idea in concept. I'd just be curious to know where you're going to Yeah, it's it. it's pretty far advanced in design. I, I just haven't had a chance to be mm -hmm. briefed on the whole well, thing fair at You're this only point. dealing with a million things, so thank you. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions for Sarah on this one? Hearing none in finance, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, now we're on to some budgetary transfers because we're at the end of the fiscal year. Move some money around. Uh, this is 17.334 in order to authorize budgetary transfers. Um, and these are all information technologies. Um, so from permanent salaries, we're taking $30,000, and from overtime, we're taking $10,000 and they're going to wind up in technology and communications in that same department. So 30000 is coming from salaries and overtime. It's going into technology and communications, which I'm assuming is equipment. And uh, so it's a total of 40000 moving within that budget. I think the mayor, do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second? And the mayor can give us more specific. Yeah, because we're, trying, we're asking to move money from uh, PS to OM, requires a council vote. And again, this is just at the end of the year. Uh, some technology projects related to communication, the phone system, uh, they need some additional funding. And so that's why we're asking to move some excess funding from PS to OM. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the mayor on that one? No. Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? No, the next, thing, next one is 17.335, in order to reprogram $5,000 for Florence Fields Pavilion Roof. Order that. $5,000 of the remaining balance in the Park and Recreation Building Project be pro reprogrammed to provide additional funds for the Florence Fields Pavilion roof uh, for roof clips needed to prepare for the installation of so solar panels on that pavilion. Do we have a motion in finance? Make a motion. Second? I think the mayor can give us a few more details on it. And this is the, it's coming from the money that built their new office building at, um, at JFK. Again, it's uh, taking money from one capital project, uh, moving it to a different capital project, uh, and as the as the order states, uh, we're trying to finalize the solar installation at uh, on the new pavilion at Florence Fields, and uh, this additional funds are needed for roof clips that were not part of the original design documents. So that's why we're making this transfer. Yes. Just wanted to check. This doesn't have anything to do with the slowdown of that project because wasn't this supposed to be done last season? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a little bit related, not exactly related. Um, the slowdown of the project was primarily because the roof contractor put the wrong roof on the building, um, uh, and so we uh, we reached a, we kind of ran into an impasse so that we could um, just have a extended discussion, including between legal counsel over the um, contractor's responsibility to install the roof that had been spec'd out. Um, and so uh, that, that's been resolved and the contractor is um, slated to install the proper roof. Uh, and um, as, as a side issue to that, um, as we've moved forward on it, there's an issue regarding clips and whether or not they were spec'd properly. And so we're 
covering the cost of those clips so we can get it done. Basically what happened is there was a metal roof designed for the pavilion, um, but it was, it was basically a, a standing seam metal roof, you know, that have the grooves. Yep. Um, and we specifically chose that because we were putting solar panels on um, and the contractor put a flat metal roof on it, um, which would have required us to drill through said roof in order to install the solar. So um, we were pretty insistent we wanted the roof that we paid for. So that's why it took, a, there's been a delay. There are contractors covering that cost. And what are the panels actually power? Uh, they will be, um, I think we're actually going to be doing a, uh, you know, a, a net metering agreement as part of this. So um, it will be providing some power for the site, but more importantly, there'll be, you know, SREX credits that we'll receive as part of the agreement. Yeah. Thank you. Council Mayor, how can a contractor put on the wrong roof? I don't get it. Well, it's a small building and, um, and they, I think they just, they did it in one day. And I'm not quite sure how there was, again, this was part of the conversation that we had. Um, uh, and it was a metal roof. Um, there's two, there's different kinds of metal roofs and this, you know, we had specifically spec the, the standing seam um, and they put a continuous solid metal roof on. And so, um, so they're gonna remove that roof. Uh, we have all the materials there. They're removing that roof and putting on the standing seam roof. Uh, we ran into this additional glitch with the clips for solar. Um, but if that was on the contractor, I think they would have read the one would think that, um, one would think that. And all I can tell you is that uh, after much discussion, um, the contractor uh, will be installing the roof that we, uh, that we spec'd out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the roof clips for the solar? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, and now Sarah comes back to see us again. We're doing some community <laughs> preservation. Uh, the first one is 17.337, an order for invasive species removal um, to Lathrop communities. It's a $3,000 program. Whereas the Lathrop community submitted a small grants application for community preservation funding for priority invasive species removal at its Parsons Brook site on which the city holds permanent conservation restrictions. And whereas the project will continue to help to improve and preserve the health of sensitive habitats in Parsons Brook watershed and has strong community support and will be uh, leveraged for private funds and volunteer effort. And where is the project's control and removal of non-invasive uh, Japanese uh, barberry, oriental bittersweet, multi-floral woes, winged something or other, I don't know what that is. Uh, garlic, <laughs> garlic mustard, we heard about that. Uh, Eulaniptus Eulen or something like that. Um, it'll be gone soon, don't worry about it. And we'll uh, complement city efforts to reduce invasive, uh, invasives in critical areas. And whereas the applicant has welcomed public use of its popular trails and will increase public knowledge of trails on the property as part of the project. And whereas on April 26, 2017, the North Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend $3,000 in Community Preservation Act funds to be used uh, in support of the project. Now, Therefore, it be ordered that $3,000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Act funding to the Lathrop communities and that the grantee meet the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor and the Council. Specifically, the $3,000 is appropriated from the CPA open space account. Do we have a motion? In Make a motion. Second. And Sarah's back. Any questions for Sarah on the chasing away the invasive species? Yeah. Councilor Nash. How do you say that word? Winged? Euonymus? Euonymus. Euonymus. Right. Yeah. Euonymus. 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 Now I, I can't say that. From Dr. Yeah. Seuss. Latin, Latin wasn't that strong. <laughs> I, um, I knew she could. Yeah. So the, this is a continuation of a previously, um, a la previously awarded project to Lathrop. Um, this map was included in their application. Um, it shows where the where the Lathrop homes are located, um, the Park Hill Farm APR that the city holds a preservation restriction on, and the small CPA work area that the city also holds a conservation restriction on. Um, 
it's a really environmentally sensitive area, lots of endangered species, and they've had a, a real problem with lots and lots of these species coming in and sort of taking over the habitat. So they've, they've taken this on as a project of their lands committee. It has a tremendous amount of support and buy-in from the Lathrop residents, and they, they've done a lot of both fundraising and active on the ground polling of stuff out there. So the, the CPC thought this was a great project. Councilor Labarge, did you have a question? Yeah, Sarah, how many acres are we talking about on that conservation area? Oh, this one is about twenty something. Yeah, twenty between twenty and thirty. But it's adjacent to other protected city property. Do they do this every year? They recently started. Um, they've been seeing this at being an increasing problem over the last few years. So they they thought this was a really important thing to get going on while they could right, still because a friend of ours is the one that donated all that property for the Lathar pump so that it could be developed. Yeah, riverfront areas are tough because the, the yeah. seeds are, are coming down the river um, and then also being deposited farther down, so this is a, a great yeah, thing. Some They're of those plants are awful. Yeah. Uh, when the CPC did a site visit, they saw a tremendous difference between the areas that where invasives had been removed and where they hadn't. And I, I think that really convinced them to support it. And um, Lathrop also encourages public access to this property. And as part of the award, they'll be putting up signs and making maps for public distribution. That's great they're doing that. <laughs> I have to make my, um, be consistent and just make my statement that I, it's very difficult for me to support using uh, CPA funds for pesticide use. Um, I did a lot of reading of all of the support documents that kind of explained how uh, the rodeo would be applied and using thinvert and I had to do a lot of research about what thinvert is and how it works and um, I just I feel like I have to um, step back from supporting this just because I until we as a city um, do a little bit more research I think about how to control invasives in different ways besides the use of um, glyphosate which is really consistently been found in research, is now outlawed in many countries in the EU. Um, <coughs> unless we do that research and try and figure out other ways to deal with invasives, it's just hard for me to support CPA dollars going to this. Call me Ryan. Um, on that point, um, I'm just because the Cons Conservation Commission weighed in, weighed in on it, right, and approved it. Uh, they they issued a permit for it. Um, okay. They didn't, and they, they also used some of these treatments on their own conservation properties where okay. infestations really seem to warrant it. Um, okay. On a case by case basis, and Lathrop is the property owner, so they, they were on board with this proposal. I don't mean to point that out as a way of saying pesticide use is okay in, in, in water supply protection districts, and I have questions about it as well. I mean, has the has the Conservation Commission, to your knowledge, without straying too far afield, ever discussed this very issue in, in this context? Yeah, I mean, every time an application comes in, it does come up. Yeah. Um, again, we don't have a, a consistent city guidance about where it, it pesticides should and shouldn't be used. So at this point, because it's being used as, as an ecological benefit, then, then they're on board with that. But they're certainly willing to have the discussion. Mm -hmm. Might be a good discussion to to have okay any other questions in finance so it's winged euonymus yes <laughs> i got it right winged you yes okay. then uh all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed all righty um, the next one is 17338 this is an order for Hampshire in affordable housing expansion uh, from the Valley CDC. Order that whereas the Valley Community Development Corporation submitted an application for Community Preservation Act funding for the Hampshire Inn expansion project at 82 Bridge Street and whereas the project will increase and improve the number of affordable rental units at the existing property from 15 SRO occupancy units to approximately 30 enhanced single room occupancy units and will also rehabilitate the historic structure and whereas suitable affordable housing, uh, especially single room occupancy, is a housing type that is still in demand locally and regionally, and whereas the housing units will be restrictive to individuals and families earning 80% of the area median income or below, and whereas the Valley CDC has an excellent record of creating affordable housing, and whereas on April 27th, 
2017, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend the $50,000 in Community Preservation Act funds be used to support the project. Now, therefore, be ordered that $50,000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Act funding to the Valley Community Development Corporation for Hampshire and Expansion a project for historic rehabilitation and capital repairs to 82 Bridge Street and expansion of affordable housing and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor and the City Council. Specifically, the 44000 is appropriated from the CPA Historic Reserve Account and 6000 is appropriated from the CPA Affordable Housing Reserve Account. Do we have a motion to finance? Um, second. 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 Questions for Sarah on this one? Sir, question. On this, it says on the second paragraph that the project will increase and improve the number of affordable, affordable rental units at the existing property from 15 single, single room occupancy units to approximately 30, mm -hmm. correct? Then if you go down one, two, three, fourth, it says the housing units will be restricted to individuals and families. So a single room is for one person. Uh, that's so, true. Yeah, that's, that's the standard affordable housing restriction language. Uh, you, you can't prohibit families from living there, so it, it's all inclusive. But a, a family you, wouldn't apply. No, I, I wouldn't okay. That's a little confusing well. here. Uh, so, so this project is one that the CPC felt was really, really important to demonstrate some sort of local commitment on, but they unfortunately didn't have a lot of uh, funding available this round because there were so many great projects submitted in the first half of the fiscal year. Um, but this will at least allow Valley CDC to move forward with some of their tax credit applications. Um, I know a lot of you are familiar with the project um, because City Council supported a zoning change to allow this to take place. Um, the building, which if you're looking at historic Northampton, it would be on the right of it, um, has been used for affordable housing for many, many years. It's, it's, it needs some improvement as the pictures show. Um, it, it doesn't have any handicapped accessibility. It, it, it needs some work to serve the residents better. And the, the council order is somewhat intentionally vague because it is so early in the project. Usually we nail down the exact number of units to be created, um, but we didn't want to restrict them this early in the process. Okay. We'll, we'll most likely come back with something that's a little more definitive. Other questions in finance, Councilor O'Donnell? Um, so did I understand you to say that the Community Preservation Committee um, expressed an interest in um, giving more to this project that they just didn't have the money? Yeah, absolutely. They, they encourage Valley CDC to return again in a subsequent funding so round. they might do in subsequent funding. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions in finance? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Next is 17339, an order for conservation funds for the Northampton Conservation Commission. Order that whereas the Northampton Conservation Commission submitted an application for Community Preservation Act funds for the Conservation Fund and whereas the fund makes possible increased acquisitions or protection of open space parcels in Northampton by supporting fast action on time sensitive real estate opportunities and whereas the project may leverage additional public funds or private funds and whereas the project meets the goal of the Northampton Sustainability Plan for protection of open space and agricultural lands and whereas the applicant has used the funds effectively in the past towards the protection of several hundred acres of open space reflecting the goals established by the Community Preservation Committee whereas all the land purchases will be reviewed and approved by the Conservation Commission and the City Council whereas on April 27, 2017 the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend $22,685 in community preservation funds be used to support this project. Uh, now, therefore, it be ordered that $22,685 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Act funding to the Northampton Conservation Fund and the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and the City Council, specifically that $15,685 allocated from the CPA Undesignated Reserve and $7,000 is allocated from the CPA Open Space Reserve Account. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. 
All and right, so I don't have a slide for this one, but I could take a picture of any piece of conservation property acquired within the last 10 years, and it would have been affected by this fund in some way. It basically allows for due diligence and fast action on agricultural and conservation opportunities. Um, if, we if we didn't have this, if we needed to do a, a title search or a an uh, environmental assessment we'd have to scrape to come up with the funding, but this is a ready source for all Sarah, this, so. we do this yearly. Yes, you do. This is a regular one, and this is sort of your, oh, by the way, account for something that needs fast action. That yes. Gives you some money to. Any other questions uh, from anyone on this one? Then uh, all in favor of a positive aye. recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the last one is 17340. Uh, it's in order to acquire any fee easement and or interest in land located in Olander Drive for the purposes of creating a memorial park. Order that whereas the master plan for creation of uh, Village Hill at the former Northampton State Hospital requires that a parcel of land be set aside for a park to memorialize the patients and employees at the hospital, and whereas Mass Development is providing a quarter of an acre, a parcel ID 31C, Lot 44, the original site of the 1876 fountain, now located in Orlander Drive at no cost to the city, and whereas the Northampton State Hospital Memorial Committee has secured community preservation funding and donations for the development of the memorial park and restoration of the fountain. No order that the city of Northampton to its park and recreation department is authorized to acquire any fee, easement, and or other interest in the above land for purposes of creation of a memorial park. The mayor is authorized to grant a conservation restriction per Mass General Law Section 184 um, or Chapter 184, Section 31 on said land. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. So this one's exciting. This has been in the works for years and years and years. I know some of you have been in, involved with the state hospital redevelopment for probably what seems like forever. <laughs> um, and the part of part of the requirements for the redevelopment were that um, it was sort of a vague requirement at the time, but that some sort of mo memorialization be provided. And over the years, it, it's morphed into this memorial park um, to be located on the original site of the fountain. Um, the map shows where it is on the east side of Olander Drive next to the existing trail system um, adjacent some of you some of you know the area it's adjacent to Jonathan Wright's house um, the next slide shows what the area used to look like <coughs> so if you look on the the right side of the picture there there is the fountain so that is the exact spot of the memorial park and we're planning to have some interpretive panels so that you can see what you would have been looking at a hundred years ago um, Let's see the fountain. Where's the fountain? No, the know. circle so in the top yeah. the road. So to the to the right of the circle, it's very small. It doesn't look the same anymore. Um, so we're the fountain restoration is currently Thank underway. You. CPA funds have been provided. We finally have enough funding in hand to break ground on this, and Mass Development has given the okay to turn the parcel over. And the the next slide is a for all you. Everybody who likes CAD, this is a plan of what the park will look like. So we'll have a <coughs> connection down to the, the open space and the, the paths, which the planning board thought was really important. Um, the, the fountain will be located in the front, and we're also planning to have some plantings and interpretive signage and benches, which aren't shown on this plan. Very exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> Any other questions on this one? Councillor. Just I'm wondering, what's the, what's the timeline on this generally? Uh, for construction of the park? Yeah, what do you anticipate? We're ready to get going now, essentially. We have the funding in hand. If we are able to get it done soon enough, we can hopefully piggyback on some of the DPW's con contracts for this year. Uh, so that's what we're hoping for. Sarah, what is the cost of the restoration of the fountain? Do you the know? Fountain restoration is about thirty-five thousand uh, dollars. We were originally planning and hoping to have all of the missing components that mysteriously disappeared. It's a very large before, mountain. Yeah, um, it was a lot bigger, but some of the other top components were taken. Uh, so we're restoring what we have on hand. It's not going to be a, a functioning fountain at this point. Someday it might be, um, and we hope to acquire or mm -hmm. fabricate those missing portions. You mentioned that there'd be um, interpretive signage about the site. But I'm wondering if it's going to have information about, you know, who lived on the site. And yeah, oh, ab absolutely. So the intent of the, the park is to memorialize the, not only the, the site and what it used to be, but also the, the patients.
patients and employees who lived and worked there for so many years. At the, the, the fountain has been in our possession for a while, correct? Yes. Portions. When did the parts vanish? Uh, before the DPW moved it, unfortunately. Yeah, I think a lot of stuff up there disappeared. So yeah. We, we were happily able to find one of the lions. Uh, somebody found it in their basement and donated it to the city, so we, we used that to create some new pieces. So that, that's well, check my basement. So. <laughs> Donation returned. Yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, donating something that was ours to begin with this <laughs> yeah. one is just kind of a loose interpretation of the term. But. I'm sure the top of the fountain is making a, a lovely addition to someone's backyard at this point. At this very point. Well, we'll keep an eye out. I'm getting a lot of backyards. I'll keep an eye out. Um, any other questions on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. And with that, we've reached the end of the agenda. Can anybody think of anything else you want to do in finance other than adjourn? We'll do it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yeah, um, well, actually. I didn't get a second on that. Yeah, was there a second on the adjournment? I second. seconded. Uh, yeah. Um, can you hold off on the recess for one item? I would like to. Um, Move item 312 up. Uh, Mr. O'Brien has been, yes. he's sat through two long yes. meetings. The two longest meetings we've had in a year. I think it's, I think we should give him a. I do too. <laughs> so we, we can spare him the last hour if we can. So, um, so now that we've come out of recess, um, and we'll go back to recess after uh, this item, but item 17.312. Um, and that's the order to accept a donation of a memorial basketball court from League Legends. And there's a second reading. I'll accept a motion. Second. Yes, make a motion. Uh, any further discussion on this item? Yes. Uh, Council LaBarge. Um, I received an email, and so did our council clerk. And she had called me in regards if she thought it was a resident of mine, and it was. Anyways, um, I don't know, Bill, if you had gotten the first email on no, I Yeah, I'm in receipt of all the emails on yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, Sarah Madden, did you get the one from um, the superintendent also? No. As long as you got the first one. But anyways, I want to read that off. The mayor also, did you get that one from the mayor? No, boy, I got dropped off because a lot of CC lists. Because it was sent to the mayor's office also in regards, do you want to talk about that now? Yeah, I mean, we, we um, again, uh, this is a project that will be, that's being coordinated by the school department, uh, and, and they've been working really closely with uh, Tony, uh, the facilities manager, and with Sarah Madden, the principal, and the superintendent, and so um, you're accepting the gift, you know, the, the larger gift, um, and they're working on the actual logistics. So when I got those concerns, I can refer it to uh, Principal Madden and to Dr. Provo. So I think you're referring to yeah. the responses that they provided yes. to, the, to your constituent. Yep. Um, Anyways, thank you, Mayor. Yep. This one here is from the superintendent, and he is saying thank you for your communication. Please allow me to clarify that no public funds will be used for the court and that students will not lose their playground. The court has been do donated to the school by the L League Legends organization and currently existing fields and play structures will remain intact. In a different facility improvement project that has nothing to do with the basketball court we are making substantial improvements to our video surveillance and capabilities to address the problem of any appropriate after our activities on campus. Thank you for alerting me to the hazards posed by falling trees, and that's been taken care of because we went through that once before, and I got a hold of um, Central Service for them to go out and take a look at that. So that was from Mr. Provost. And this is from Sarah Madden today, which she also talked about the last email that came in. This is Sarah Madden, principal at RK Fen Ryan Road School. 
Mr. Koloski, I am sorry for any upset feelings regarding the donation of the basketball court to our school grounds. In my opinion, there are many positives for our community. One, the court does not come from any public funds. Two, the hoops will be adjustable so that younger students will be better able to assess basketball games. Three, no part of our playground or swings will be removed to allow for space for the new court. Four, the court will be a wonderful upgrade to our facilities. Also, many community members currently access our basketball courts and playground with no added maintenance cost or public bathrooms. Sometimes the recreation department has a porta potty out on the fields, and I often allow Mr. Kowalski's grandsons and friends to use the school bathroom after school hours at no extra cost. There are no plans for additional bathrooms or maintenance cost. Security cameras have been needed here for many years, and I am happy to report that they will be added soon as part of our capital planning. And I have to say that the mayor was very, very helpful with us within the past couple of years of getting these installed because it was in dire need. So she is understanding that she understands the concerns about the lighting, and I also, too, in talking with Mike O'Brien, they're going to work everything out with planning and with central service to make sure it does not affect any of the houses abutting the back of Ryan Road School. So Sarah Maiden is saying that they certainly want the school to be a good neighbor, and she appreciates the communication. So I just want to say I think this is an excellent, excellent project. And so many people, I went to an ice cream social two weeks ago at the school, and so many teachers have been excited about it, and even the children will be excited. So I want to thank Michael O'Brien and all the guys that are the legends that are putting this together, because it, it's really such a great memorial. Uh. Any other questions or comments? I just would like to say, and this is Mr. O'Brien addressed these in public comment, the same issues, and that I have yet to see a project that met this level of diligence and outreach, uh, particularly given the fact that it is, as we've said numerous times, at no cost to the city. This is a memorial that's being donated and, and managed essentially into perpetuity. Um, and nothing but an asset for the school and the school programs and the community and the neighborhood. Um, and, I, and they will have to comply with all the existing standards relative to lighting and everything else to, that any other project would have to be, to be implemented. Um, so I, you know, I, neighbors express concerns usually born out of not knowing what the circumstances are and I hope that uh, any residents who have expressed concerns, at least maybe hopefully those will be um, accommodated with these answers. Okay. So and and so far, and I know that these guys have worked very hard to to um, hear their concerns and address them. So right. and the only complaint is what I see right here is one. Yeah, right. so far I've only known of the one, but but one is one and and, and worth worth addressing, and and I believe they have been. So any other, uh, any other discussion, Councilor Klein? I just want to say that um, a number of Ward 7 residents, uh, families have students there at the school, and um, I heard from a few people how excited they are and um, what a wonderful project this is and how <laughs> grateful they are for it. So I just want to say that. Um, and I also just feel like it's really important that we note that this is kind of the best of what residents of a city can do is yes. um you know come together and do a passion project like this and um bring something that really enhances the city to the city so thank you so much i can't see you but <laughs> you're so behind the podium there thank you so much with that 
Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lavard. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. That passes unanimously in second reading and is done. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now have a, oh, a, a 10 and a quarter minute recess. We do our eight minute recess. Just They're speaking like of Harper, Andrew Rowe, go ahead.
All right, we're out of um, recess, out of our 10-hour recess, um, and back to the reg regular order of things. <clears throat> and we'll start off with the financial orders that you just heard in the, uh, discussed in the Finance Committee, all, all coming forward with positive recommendations. So we start off with item 17.325, that's an order to approve the FY 2018 general fund bed, bleh, budget. Motion to approve. <laughs> All that. Motions are made and seconded. Further discussion on this item? Uh, roll call, please, Pam. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Schill? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor White? Yes. So uh, that passes in first reading, and we will be voting on it again in uh, our next council session. Item 17.326. Uh, orders to approve the FY 2018 Enterprise Funds. Move, Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shaw? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. That passes in first reading and will be, as I said, revisited at our next meeting. Item 17.327, this is in order to approve the FY 2018 revolving funds. First reading. Move approved. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion on the revolving funds? Roll call, please. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor White? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Yes. That passes in first reading. Item 17.28, <coughs> that's an order to approve free, cra uh, free cash, uh, the capital stabilization, stabilization and fiscal stability funds of the first reading. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Okay. Passes in first reading. Item 17.329 is in order to approve $29,925 from free cash and a gift of $10,000 from the Ray Ellerbrook Memorial Fund for the play structure at Arcanum Field. Move, Move to approve. Motion to in the second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. 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 Okay, that passes in first reading. Item 17.330, this is in order to appropriate free cash and approve use of gift funds to be used for the police department firing range project. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion on the firing range? Roll call, please. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor all right, that passes in first reading. Item 17.332, this is in order to approve purchase of eight plus or minus acres uh, north of Route 66 in the Mineral Hills area for $200,000 and to approve borrowing for such purchase. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Yes. And the per and that passes. Item 17.33. This is in order to approve appropriation of $600,000 for the purpose of improvement of public recreational facilities and to borrow $600,000 under Mass General Law <coughs> B, uh, Section 11, Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 8C, and to contract for any federal, state, and or, uh, and or other aid, including grants available for this project, and authorize the mayor or his designee take such actions as are necessary to carry out the terms, purposes, and conditions of this grant. Move approval. Second. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Pam? Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor, uh, excuse me, Councilor Carney? Yes. That passes in first reading. Item 17.334, this is in order to authorize budgetary transfers. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes
Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Yes. Passes in first reading. Item 17.335 is in order to reprogram $5,000 for Florence Fields Pavilion Roof. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Sheriff? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Next up, we have item 17.337 uh, to item 17.339. These are three orders received from the Community Preservation Committee. These orders are their recommendations for funding. Move and it's first reading. Uh, motion. Uh, did you want to separate these? Uh, yeah, okay. just okay. to ask my so you, uh, my guess I'd is like you to pull out the Lathrop Community okay. Objectives. So we'll do, we'll do um, in order item 17.337, uh, that's an order for invasive species removal at the Lathrop communities. That's for $3,000. I'll accept a motion on that. Make a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. No. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Now, uh, why don't we take 17.338 and 17.339 uh, together? Is everyone okay with that? Uh, Moving as a group. Second. Motion so been second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Can I get a second? Yeah. Please. Councilor Murphy. Everyone's chiming in today. This is great. I'm going to like to see this. Everyone's <laughs> making motions and seconding. This is excellent. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Sheriff? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Those pass in first reading as well. Item 17.340, and this is in order to acquire any fee, easement, and or any other interest in land located on Olander Drive for the purpose of creating a memorial park. First reading. Move approval. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. All right, that passes in first reading. Item 17.312. This is an order to did accept that. a don. Oh, yeah, we did it. Thank you. Bang. Uh, <laughs> item 17.314. This is an order to purchase an expansion of the Broadbrook Greenway on North Farms Road. A second reading. Move, Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and second. Any further comments or discussion on this? Roll call, please, Pam. Councillor Sheriff? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. That passes in second reading. Item 17.315 this is in order to release and acquire conservation easements in the Sawmill Hills Conservation Area. On Move to Hill. Second. Motion's made and second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. That passes in the second reading. Uh, next up is item 17.317. This is in order to appropriate free cash to the snow and ice accounts, which we almost <coughs> use again. Yes, to approve. Move. So move approval. Second. Motion's made and second. Any discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Sheriff? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Okay, that passes in second reading. Item 17.318, this is in order to appropriate free crash to uh, hire a consultant to prepare the Northampton Fair Housing Assessment. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Councillor Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. That passes in second reading. Uh, item 17.319 is in order to approve the end of the year budget transfers. Second Move reading. Move to approve. Motion's made and second. Any discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Sheriff? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. All right. Passes in second reading. Item 17.320. That's an order to authorize the acquisition by gift purchase, eminent domain, or otherwise. The fee interest in two parcels of land in Waitley and Williamsburg. Move approval. Second. Discussion? 
Roll call, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Blake. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. All right. That's just in second reading. Now we move on to orders, item 17.313. This is an order to accept an easement from the Florence Bank, also a second reading. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Motion's made in second. Any discussion? Bam. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Blake. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Okay, it passes in second reading. Item 17.316 is an order to accept uh, the revised sections of law relative to parking revenue. Second reading. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. That's okay. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Okay, that passes in second reading. Now, in first reading, we have uh, item 17.321. That's an order to approve the credit incentive policy for stormwater <coughs> flood control utility. We had a presentation by, uh, by Donna Lascalia. Uh, is there further discussion on this item? Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, is there further discussion? Now, it's on the floor. Councilor Murphy. Well, I think what she told us was the policy. <coughs> Exactly. The same, same policy as the year previous, but uh, required under the ordinance that they give a presentation each year, subject to an up and down vote. Well, sure. We should also just note what she said, which is many people have taken advantage of these incentives and other people should feel empowered to apply for them. Yeah. Yeah. I hope folks take note of that, that these are available to you. And as I said, they're incentives to reduce storm water production. Okay, any other discussion? Roll call, please, Pam. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Passes in first reading. We'll be discussing that and voting on it at our next meeting. Up to ordinances. Item 17.331. This is an ordinance to amend 312 to 110 regarding uh, the Roundhouse parking lot. Uh, this is a refer to Committee on Legislative Matters and Transportation Parking Commission. Move to refer. Move to refer. Motion's made <coughs> seconded. Uh, all those in favor of referral? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next up, this is um, item 17.250. This is an ordinance to add a new smart overlay district, and this is second reading. Move Sir, to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, Councilor Murphy, do you want to speak to this? Or call the mayor's here. <laughs> Yeah, this one, the question was this one changed yet again. Well, there's a couple of comments yeah. that have come from DHCD, uh, and they would like us to make some changes, uh, language changes. Um, so language changes that are now in, represented in green? Yes. From the yes. Um, if I can see them. Uh, basically, there's... Uh, four words being added in th section 350-20.3 um, under the words overlay, the subheading overlay district. Uh, they would like um, the, the words added, you know, well, it says in an overlay uh, that is superimposed. That's what we have. They want added an overlay district that, that may contain sub-districts and they want those words added. Um, that's the one change. And then the other change is on the following uh, page, and it is in that same subsection overlay district, um, but it's actually, um, yes, it's actually part of that same A. Uh, they've collapsed everything. 
um, and the terms, uh, again, it says the regulations for use, dimension, and all other provisions of the zoning ordinance governing the underlying zoning district shall remain in full force except for those projects undergoing development to, pursuant to Section 350-20.0. Within boundaries of the SG district, a developer may elect either to develop a project in accordance with the requirements of the smart growth zoning or to develop a project in accordance with the requirements of the regulations for use, dimension, and all other provisions of the zoning ordinance governing the underlying zoning district so it's kind of um, it's implied in the ordinance and it's obviously implied under mass general law that a developer could choose to use the smart growth path or they could go under the traditional zoning DHCD wants it actually in the ordinance so um, you have two choices you can approve it without their language and then it's a dead letter because the ordinance is only in force if DHC approves it or we just accept their language changes so I would Encourage you to accept those or as amendments. Can I can I ask um, when this was submitted to them? So, do, do you have any idea? <coughs> I don't know. I just know that we got. Um, uh, I know we added the extra project that came midstream after we started down this path um, when the Village Hill project got added, and so um, we submitted that one as well and this information came back to us. I'm assuming since the last time Carolyn Mish was here, right. um, this additional uh, language came back. Some of the concerns that have been expressed to me is, of course, this is unique in some respects, but the fact that this has undergone multiple revisions in between um, initial referral, uh, introduction into uh, legislative matters, mm -hmm and it's revisit back here and even since the first reading. So, and and um, it doesn't, it does and I know the solicitor has opined that it does not tip the balance on, on zoning law, which require, the state requires us to, if it's been substantive, substantively changed, to have to go back and start over. Mm -hmm. But um, the concerns were is the best practices and transparency process for the public to try and keep a pace of this, never mind the counselors for that matter, mm -hmm. that this one's been problematic. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the chair of legislative matters and I had a brief discussion before we started today about this, and we, di we didn't know where to go with this at this point. I I'm glad that you, you were capable of explaining particularly the more significant and substantive change on here is is required language and it makes sense you're right sitting there and counting on something being implied or implicit it's better to spell it out clearly and and but it's just uh, the process has been um, not uh, yeah this is one of those ones I know when we introduced it we were we said that you know we're awaiting approval from DHCD uh, you know they ultimately have to sign um, so if you would like to have you know delay the vote on it and take more time I don't know how much public input you've had on it and how confused the public well, is about it but I'll leave that to the council although I, I mean I think we can I mean the clarification mm -hmm. is counted but I, I don't I mean it, it would be nice if if in the future that the, most of these T's and I's get addressed mm -hmm. before it gets to this point in the second reading because yeah the, it's, it, it just just for transparency purposes, yep. I think, are more significant. The other pro well, the other problem I will tell you. Well, uh, it's not worth it. I, I just <laughs> my, in my experience with state government, that the more times, the more lawyers who look at it, the more changes exactly. Will come yeah, well, so the billable hours. Every so lawyer yeah, has to yeah. make a change. So I know that that was the issue with the charter as yeah. as it moved through the process from the House to the Senate. So I'm not making an excuse. I'm just saying that we're kind of at the mercy of DHCD, and so. This is the language they've right, and it, and so DHCD doesn't have a so my have, my, have a clear linear timeline. Yeah. Process. So what, what I think happened is after you made the, you know, we submitted the original ordinance, then there were amendments made on first reading, and I think Miss Mish sent them the amended version, um, and I've triggered something else. And I'm assuming this is the, then they discovered, oh wait, you should probably put this in there too. So um, I, I'm I think that's how the chronology worked. Um, so, Council Murphy. Yeah, I think 
what makes legislative matters have a hard time with it is we published a public hearing. She shows up at the public hearing with an amended version of it already. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to first reading. Yeah. And then it gets amended yet again in between readings. Mm -hmm. And you know, I understand that, that you know the state fiddles and diddles as we go yep. along. But boy, it's it's sort of especially with zoning, which can be an emotional issue for people. Yep. It would be really nice if they get a composite ordinance before they submit it in the first place. Because uh, it, it is really, mm -hmm. it looks terrible to the public. When people show up at a public hearing and go, what do you mean, I'm, I, you didn't advertise what you're voting on today because you changed it again? Mm -hmm. It's really an uncomfortable situation. We don't, I mean, we don't actually advertise the entire text of mm -hmm. the ordinance. Mm -hmm. That's not what's advertised in the, so no one who reads the public notice is gonna read the, and there's no actual requirement that you post the full text, but I get mm -hmm. it, I get it. Yeah, well it's tough for the committee when yeah. we're up here trying to make sure that the members of the committee actually have the current version of it. Mm -hmm. And if it gets said to you in advance and you actually choose to read it, you get here and yep. or not because it's different. It, it's just very troublesome. So. Totally understood. And I will communicate that back to OPS. Uh, Councilor Donald. Um, and I agree with Councilor Murphy's statements on this. I'd say in this case, the distinction is these amendments <coughs> are, are clarifying amendments that any one of the council could have offered tonight right. without having to substantively crack it back open again. Um, so even though they came from the state uh, and it was a frustrating process, there's, as far as these amendments go, I don't think the public should be concerned about us voting to adopt them in this session. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, the whole process about this ordinance generally had had problems and we had to have we did have to crack it open again and have a whole hearing <laughs> when we expanded um, the map to encompass two parts in the city and that kind of thing but tonight these amendments are, are fine be because the purpose and the functioning of, of the ordinance is exactly the same so I just note that for anyone listening and curious I, I do want to assure you that I did ask the solicitor to make a determination today that it didn't substantively change it and we did not have to go back and have another public hearing and he said no absolutely not yeah. these are these are minor changes uh, you know as required by the enabling authority and they don't substantively change the intent or the purpose and you can go on i mean i'm comfortable enough that i will move the amendments that have been submitted okay i'd second that okay all right so that answers those questions that's good all right so the <clears throat> Motions were made to amend the recommended language uh, that the mayor just provided for us. Is there any discussion on those on the amendments? Okay. All those in favor of the amendments, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And I'll move second reading. Second reading is the motions we made, <laughs> which we actually should have probably done before we actually moved. <laughs> we did get a motion. Okay. Oh, we did have Thank God. Okay. All right. So back to the original order as amended. Any further discussion? No. Nope. Okay. Roll call. This is second reading. Hopefully the last we've seen this for a while. So Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar? Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shira? Yes. Okay. That no. passes the second. Can't change it again now. <coughs> well, you can always change it. <coughs> you can always change it. Item 17.289. This is an ordinance relative to expanding permit time limits in uh, 350, uh, what, Chapter 350, Section 47, and 156, uh, Section 6B, to match recently amended enabling legislation and mass general law. Chapter 40A, Section 9, Municipal Modernization Act, is second reading. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lavard? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shira? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Okay. That passes in second reading. <coughs> I have no updates. Uh, there's been no information request unless somebody has one now uh, or committee study address. I have a request, no new business. So that leaves us with one item left and it's all on you. Move to adjourn. 
second. Motion's made, seconded. All those in favor of adjourn, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you all very much.